Hey guys, what's up? So here are 10 turn-based RPGs that I thought were heavily underrated and I just thought you should know about. And I'm not gonna cover games like Batan Kaitos or Shadow Hearts because I've covered those games like 10 million times already even though they should be on this video. So those are like my honorable mentions. Anyway, let's begin! Number 10, Seventh Dragon 3, Code VFD. Yeah, meet one of the weirdest names ever. In this case, it belongs to a pretty solid turn-based RPG that's part of a series of games never released outside Japan. This is actually the first one ever to come overseas, unlike its predecessors on the Nintendo DS and the PSP. It's actually the fourth game in the series, with the story taking place 80 years before the PSP titles about a corporation trying to stop the awakening of the Seventh Dragon. You know what happens if they fail, right? End of the world, blah blah blah. You customize your characters with a variety of designs and classes, but you unlock some more as the game progresses. Battles are fought in turns, in a first-person perspective while watching your fighters executing their attacks and actions all the time, which is pretty cool by the way. Exploration is done in an isometric view with your allies following you around. So overall, it sounds like a classic RPG, right? Sometimes it'll be a quest-driven adventure, sometimes a story-driven one. That's right, the game has a solid, well-written plot for you to unfold as you advance. It's a shame we never got the other titles in the series, but I think you can play them with a fan-translated patch. Anyway, give this game a chance. Number 9. Mary's Kelter Nightmares Mary's Counter is a twisted, dark, and fanservice RPG about lowlies going nuts when they use too much blood. Sounds messed up, but trust me, it's just an exaggeration. In truth, it's your average harem with clueless protagonist who's just too nice in this post-apocalyptic scenario. Very well written, by the way. Story may sound silly, but it gets better as you go on. I mean it. This is a first-person dungeon crawler RPG with some of the longest maps ever created, but since the art style is gorgeous, with puzzles that are kind of fun to play for the most part, you won't mind it that much. Battles are turn-based also on a first-person perspective, but you can only fight with the girls as the main character works on a supporting role the entire time. He's the one in charge of shooting blood at them so they calm down. But if you let them get a little crazy, you do some major damage to your enemies. Needless to say, there's a big influence from gothic versions of Alice in Wonderland, mainly on this scenario and the character design. And a lot of fan service that involves the use of the touch screen of the Vita. Yeah. This one has gotten very expensive over the past few years, so if you want to play it on a physical format, I wish you the best. Number 8. Brave Story, New Traveler Based on a novel by Miyuki Miyabe, Brave Story follows a new adventure that continues the story in the book with a different perspective. It spawned three games, one on the PS2, one on the Nintendo DS and one on the PSP. We only got the latter unfortunately, but that's better than nothing, right? It's a pretty charming turn-based RPG with smooth graphics and character models in 3D. It was developed by Game Republic, a defunct company who also made the underrated action RPG Folklore on the PS3. They also developed the Dragon Ball Origins games on the Nintendo DS. In Brave Story New Traveler, you play as a silent protagonist that goes into this fantasy universe in order to find some gems alongside different characters. His goal is to go back to real life one day and save his best friend from an unknown disease. This game just has everything from old-school classic turn-based RPGs, with an interesting story and characters full of charisma. Definitely an underrated title on the PSP. Number 7. 
Number 7. Ortonelico Melody of Alemia and Ortonelico 2 Melody of Metaphalica. Back in the PS2 era, a lot of people ignored these two games that were developed by Gust, the same company behind the Atelier series. They both are connected as the second is a sequel to the first one, but not in a direct way, since they have different characters involved in a different plot altogether. Taking place in a science fiction universe in a planet called RCL, Ortonelico 1 and 2 are character-driven RPGs with profound detail in their development, especially when you gain access to entering the girls' subconsciousness to bond with them and create stronger magic. These missions take quite a while as they are a major part of the gameplay mechanics. Battles are fought in turns, with your characters attacking the enemies and also defending their Raven Tail, the girl you're trying to bond with, while she casts her song to generate a devastating attack. Yep, it's an amazing battle system, to be honest. I know the games are just full of fan service and devious behaviors with a lot of suggestive themes but the detail in the plot and the character development makes them totally worth it. They're PS2 exclusive and they're starting to get expensive, so get your hands on both while you still can. Number 6. Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2 it's a game cut into two parts, with the second one being a direct sequel to the first one. There are obviously spin-offs of the Megami Tensei series, also played in a science fiction universe, but focusing more on their post-apocalyptic nightmare. First game takes place in a digital world, where characters have acquired the power to transform into demons to fight their enemies, all of them belonging to a tribe that's trying to kill the other tribes to ascend to Nirvana. So yeah, it's a weird story but full of philosophical drama, something that I absolutely love about this franchise. Navigation in third person helps relieve the player from all those tiresome first person dungeon crawlers from this series. Battles are fought in turns with your characters being able to transform at any time in Megami Tensei's famous press turn system. Instead of recruiting demons, you now talk to them to get more Atma, the real source of power to boost status. You do this all by eating the demons. Oh yeah. This cannibalism theme caused a lot of controversy back in the day, with this game depicting that topic and its own form of violence. Overall, this duology of games is heavily underrated, and since they're still kinda cheap, you might wanna give them a chance if you haven't. Number 5. Lost Sphere Lost Sphere is the spiritual successor of I Am Setsuna, a game that I have yet to play to this day. It came out on most modern platforms, so there's no reason to ignore it as it is pretty damn fun. It takes elements from Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy with the active time battle system found in them, so it is heavily influenced by all those retro RPGs from the mid-90s. However, here you need to accommodate your characters by moving them around the battlefield so you can strategize your attacks and do more damage. It may be a little tricky at first to understand, but once you get the idea, you'll master it in no time. By doing so, you'll enjoy its battle mechanics even more, especially against some of the bosses which can be quite challenging for the most part. Stories about a bunch of kids living in a peaceful village, yeah, I know it's generic, but trust me, it gets much better. Your goal is to restore towns, people and items by the power of memories you'll find in this story-driven RPG. Main character's name is Kanata, same name as the protagonist of Exist Archive on the PS Vita and the PS4, another underrated turn-based RPG by the way. Since music is beautiful and the overall scenario is charming, Lost Sphere is overall a very pleasant experience, so do yourself a favor and play this underrated title. Number 4. Suikoden Tear Cries Everybody's been nuts about the Suikoden series for the past few years, including me, since I'm a huge fan as it is my favorite RPG franchise of all time. However, time went on and the attention drove away from the spin-off on the Nintendo DS. 
Tear Christ has no connection to the PS1 or PS2 titles whatsoever, and it acted separately with both recurring team members and new people on its development. However, it's still quite a fun adventure to play, if you can ignore its terrible English voice acting! Well, it isn't that bad, to be honest. Anyway, just like any other Suikoden game, you build your castle by forming alliances and recruiting characters, most of them playable during battle. These are fought in turns, but only with parties of four. That was a letdown for me, but since the game was so much fun, I eventually got over it. There are no more war battles or duels here, but that's okay, since it's just a spin-off. Story is there, partly as a comedy thanks to the main character and his immature bursts of charisma, but it gets serious when it needs to. If you haven't played this game, whether you play the others or not, do it now since it's already an underrated title on the Nintendo DS. Number 3. Atelier Iris Eternal Mana and Atelier Iris 2 The Ass of Destiny. I haven't played the third one in the series, but I'm guessing that's an okay game, although it didn't do as well as the other two. Anyway, Eternal Mana and The Asset of Destiny are greatly underrated titles nowadays, mainly because of the overall success of the newer Atelier games that started back in the PS3. These two have been overshadowed by them, with gamers forgetting about their existence. The Iris trilogy was the first one ever to be localized outside Japan, and it became slightly successful at first. My personal favorite is Ass of the Destiny, which tells the story from two points of view as you are switching between the two main characters every now and then. With Felt, you'll be on the adventure mode, navigating through the world, getting involved into armies and politics, and of course fighting turn-based battles in 2D. These are quite fun since they rely on skills and alchemy to boost the battle progress in your favor. Then you play as Vise to do all the alchemy stuff, predating the popular trilogies that came afterwards. These missions are done to help Felt in the other world, both characters gathering materials and such. They're very colorful games, full of charisma and charm, so I see no reason why people should continue ignoring them. You wanna play a big and important part of the origins of this franchise? Then play these two underrated RPGs. Number 2. The Alliance Alive You guys know I've been an enthusiast of this game ever since I first played it, and it was time to properly call it an underrated title. I've recommended it before, but I can't shut up about it, especially not with the upcoming Switch release in October! I just can't wait now that I have a Switch! But in the meantime, if you don't wanna wait, consider playing the original version on the 3DS. The story was written by Yoshitaka Murayama, the creator of the Suikoden series, and developed by Cattle Call, Gretzo, and Furyu, so you can imagine the influences behind it. The game revolves around a bunch of characters living in a dystopian world, each with their own story arc, until they all merge together. United through two common goals, stop the oppression and defeat the root of the Water Devils. Battles are fought in turns throughout the many different formations in these grids, with parties of five all the time. It also has a system a la Saga franchise, with characters not leveling up but instead randomly increasing status after each battle. This game's all about the strategies you'll craft on managing equipment, money and resources. Especially since another one of your goals is to recruit playable and mostly non-playable characters to build a huge alliance worldwide with these towers. Overall, it's a highly unique game, a great comeback for the Suikoden creator, and an underrated masterpiece that you need to play. Number 1. Hexis Force Been a while since I last talked about this game, I used to praise it a lot back in the day and recommend it often, so that's the reason why I stopped. I decided to include it today, however, just so I could come back to it. Revolving around two main characters, each with their own route, which is completely different than the other, thankfully, it's a great adventure with tons of charm. The battle system here is also carried through formations with your characters causing and receiving damage, depending on their position. 
It's also dependent on skills and weapons, giving way to some tactical execution from your behalf. The character development here, along with the overall plot during warfare and elemental issues, is simply fantastic. You'll get your stereotypes every now and then, with some comedy included, but you'll be deeply drawn into the main conflict before you even notice. Great story, character-driven game, Hexis Force is an underrated turn-based RPG, unfortunately expensive and hard to find nowadays. But if you happen to get your hands on it, give it priority over your backlog as it is quite addictive to play and just very, very fun. That's it. So, what are other underrated turn-based RPGs that you think should have been on this list or that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time.